Madam Mayor, we're now live. Thank you. We have two minutes. One minute. Well, one minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Outstanding Do comment. Do we not? Yeah, previous comment. That was. That still apply? I'm not too sure. We just asked the councillors if they wish to. Any apologies that anyone was aware of? If they're not aware of an apology. Sorry, it's 5.31. Can you all hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank man. you. Okay. My apologies. Um, we were on mute. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the special council meeting today. You have your um, agenda with you. I'll start with the first uh, item, uh, acknowledgement. We, the Greater Shepparton City Council, begin today's meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Item two is privacy notice. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page and made available for public access on our website, along with the official minutes of this meeting. Councillors, are there any apologies today? None? Well, Madam Mayor, um, I'm not sure whether Councillor Summer is uh, an apology or not. But uh, the fact that she's not here, I'll put an oh, apology. She has just joined us. Just joined. Summer has just joined us. Thank you. Okay, so we have a full quorum. No apologies today. Item number four, declarations of conflict of interest. Uh, councillors, is there any declaration of conflict of interest today with respect to the agenda items? None. Okay. Before we move on to item 5.1, I just want to uh, remind everyone that um, this uh, uh, special council meeting is uh, for the hearing of uh, submissions. 
uh, budget submissions. Uh, every presenter is allocated five minutes, only five minutes. There's not, there's not any extension uh, of time that is uh, allowed. Um, a bell will ring at four, at, uh, four minutes. Also, um, during the hearing, counselors won't be asking questions. However, they can seek clarification uh, about any of the uh, uh, presentations. And of course, um, yeah, so that's, uh, those are the few points I wanted to remind you about. I'll quickly, um, just for a minute, I need to seek some clarification. Do we want to go ahead with this? Oh, this is invalid. All right, councillors, uh, we have uh, on page number two, item 5.1, draft budget 2020-2021, hearing of section 223 submissions. Um, there are three recommendations. We'll start with first. Yes, Councillor Hazelman, do you have got a question? No, Madam Mayor, I'm quite happy to move the recommendation that standing orders be suspended to allow submitters to be heard. Thank you. You were too quick. I was getting to read this one, first, <laughs> but that's Sorry. fine. Thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Patterson? Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. We we'll now start our uh, hearing of the, uh, of, the, of the presentation from submitters. So our first uh, presenter is uh, Mr. Rod Schubert, representing Shepparton Food Chair. And we'll now um, admit Mr. Rod Schubert in our Zoom meeting. Well, actually, he's already there in Bourbon Room. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schubert, you can start your presentation and you have five minutes. And as I've said earlier, there'll be a bell uh, at four minutes. So please uh, start. Thank, thank you very much, Mayor, and thank you very much for the count to councillors for giving me the opportunity to speak and present Food Share's requirements to you. Since 2012, Shepherd and Food Share has distributed more than 2.6 million kilograms of food to people in need at an estimated benefit to our community of more than six million dollars. 300,000 kilograms of food is distributed to registered emergency relief agencies, schools, community meals programs, and churches annually. Food Share is the only local rescue food rescue agency in our region. With the equivalent of just one full-time staff member, Food Share is able to del deliver this critical service. We request additional council support. We thank council for its initial $30,000 support of Shepherd and Food Share, However, due to an unforeseen increase in operational costs, we request that council give consideration to contributing an extra $20,000, bringing council's contribution for this year to a total of $50,000. Normally it costs food share around $125,000 annually to operate. We expect in the next 12 months we'll require up to $200,000 to operate. Why support us? we receive absolutely zero state or federal government support. And due to COVID-19 since March, Shepherd and Food Share has incurred approximately $25,000 in additional operating expenses. And we expect in the next six months, a further, further $45,000 will be required. The additional costs we incurred are as follows. Additional fuel service costs for the Food Share van, Due to less food being made available, we have had a need to do many additional trips, equating to an average of an extra $200 per week being spent on fuel. For example, we go to Monongeta to collect eggs each fortnight. We have additional trips to supermarkets and food collection boxes. We do many trips outside the region to Melbourne to collect food from Oz Harvest, and we also have collected donors. We do trips to Kyabrum to collect pasta and to other food shares in Bendigo and Wodonga to do food shops, food swaps. 
We have the te technology, capital and equipment costs that are ever increasing as we need to upgrade our computer systems to cope with increased demand. NBN needs to be connected to cope with increased demand and security. We need larger freezer capacity. We need more food trolleys and a forklift is required. We have incurred additional staff costs due to longer daily hours and the introduction of two day shifts due to COVID-19 social distancing. We have also increased staff costs due to having to extend our operational hours from four days to five days. Our, we've had to change the way we distribute due to our reduced food supply and food, food rescues and donations decreased by about, around 80%, resulting in the need to spend $12,000 to date to purchase necessary food staples, something Food Chair has never had to do before. We had to change the way we distribute food and we now distribute food via food boxes. Initially, some boxes were donated. Now Food Chair has had to spend two and a half thousand on boxes due to the demand for our service and is expected that the cost for food boxes over the next four to six months will be around $15,000. We've had to focus on additional cleaning and purchase additional personal protective equipment. The purchase of additional cleaning and personal protective equipment has been essential to ensure there is no outbreak of COVID-19 COVID at our service. We've had to purchase face masks, disposable gloves and sanitizers at a premium price as it was earlier. We've had to purchase individual PPE for van drivers. We've had to purchase additional mops, buckets, cleaning supplies due to the additional cleaning procedures that were required. We are expecting an increase in utility costs due to our, op our additional operating hours. So we expect electricity and water usage to increase. We've got a requirement to increase our security. Food Chair's location is isolated and is not visible to the general public. Further, COVID-19 has resulted in an increase in food insecurity, meaning there are just a lot more individuals dropping by to see if they can access food directly, which in itself presents safety concerns. Therefore, the safety of our staff, we are in the process of installing a security system and some alarms that is expected to cost around about six to $7,000. Mr. Schubert, uh, your five minutes have finished. So okay. that you. was your allocated time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, did not, I did not hear the bell mayor, so that's, that's okay. All right. No, thanks for letting me know. I think, yeah, the bell. All right. In our next presentations, perhaps I should be uh, saying it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for Okay. So our next presenter is Mr. Paul Union. I think uh, ring it just until I acknowledge it. Is it Mr. Paul Union? That's not. Uh, that's no, our cleaning no, lady. That's what I thought. Paul's in here and he's coming through the door <laughs> shortly. <Sorry. Yes. laughs> so bear with us for a for a couple of minutes while we um, arrange and prepare the room for our next presenter. Hello, welcome Mr. Paul Union. You are representing Kyla Park Recreation Reserve uh, today. Please uh, start your presentation. I just want to remind you that you have five minutes and uh, bell will ring at four minutes. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Seema. 
Uh, two points to raise in this particular submission in regards to lighting costs uh, levied by council on uh, sporting clubs that use lighting in the uh, Shepparton region. Point one, the increase this year uh, and last year per Lux, Lux, L-U-X being a light emittance measurement, how much light a sporting ground uses, the current charge is 20 cents per Lux per hour proposed this year to move to 25 cents per lux. Last year, the lux increased from 15 cents to 20 cents, which is a 33% increase. Council budget papers only noted a 25% increase last year. This year, the increase is proposed to be 25%. Again, council papers only note 20%. That is therefore a 58% increase on sporting clubs in just two years. All training by majority of winter sports is done after 5.30 p.m. at night. In winter, this means using lights. This 58% increase is a huge in a normal year, let alone during COVID. There was no advice of the increase last year of the 33% or this year in regard to the 25% proposed. All bookings are usually required in advance, so in January or February. And so it's very hard for clubs to budget when there's an increase of 25% and there's no consultation, no process in place. One, two or 3% would be not as hard to swallow with no consultation. I request council and councillors consider deferring any lux and all sporting club charges increase this season, push back for two years before then consulting with user groups if the increase is greater than 4%. I wish to raise point two. I wish to raise what I see as an ongoing inequity in regard to methodology of charging for lux. When an AFL ground with six light poles is charged at the same rate as a smaller ground with four light poles, both delivering 100 lux, how can the rate still be the same when there's far less power being used by the smaller ground? Whilst not fully sure what this means, Hockey and netball appear to be charged at a similar rate, but this is an assumption as there's no charges for lights for hockey and netball on council's fees and charges. I believe Deakin Reserve may be using old halogen style lights, whereas Kyla Park is using the new LEDs. This also has a far greater cost in the old halogen being LED being one fifth the cost to use versus the old technology, yet the rates are exactly the same. There's less maintenance on the LEDs. So I'm just not sure how council can A, put the prices up, but then justify such variances in the pricing for different grounds and different size grounds. Thank you uh, for that submission. Thank you. Okay, so... Second submission. So now you'll start your second submission, uh, which is on behalf of various local sports uh, sports bodies. Please start. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Seema. My second submission uh, I'm bringing to Council as President of Kyala Park Recreation Reserve, but also Jamie Macri, the Regional Development Officer of the Gold Murray AFL, and Peter Foote, who sits on the AFL board. A short period of time, 10, 12 days ago, we reached out to uh, many local uh, sporting uh, clubs, volunteer sporting clubs in the Shepparton region uh, for support for this particular submission. COVID-19 has obviously had a massive effect on sporting clubs. We haven't been able to take the field, take the pitch, take the courts uh, since March 16, and that uh, is just starting to be relaxed now. Uh, there are clubs starting to train this week, which is fantastic. This has brought a lack of community, community engagement for all winter sports, not being able to get together. It's had a massive financial effect. Sponsors are understandably wary about spending additional money as well. Um, and this is wreaking havoc among the volunteers who are the ones that have to raise the money and also support the clubs. My request to council, which is detailed in this uh, very comprehensive uh, submission is having council include as part of phase two of council's COVID response, and forgive me for being presumptive that there will be a phase two, that if there is a phase two, that under community of the current uh, four response target areas, that winter 
fees for all sporting clubs, be it bowls, croquet, basketball, uh, be it tennis, be it soccer, AFL, uh, be it hockey, be it netball, uh, be waived for the winter season, the full winter season, which would include pre-season, the normal season uh, and post-season. This is quite a extensive ask of council, but bearing in mind from March 16, all fields, all community uh, spaces have been closed. So that loss has already been incurred by council up and, and, and council has gracious, graciously offered to, to not charge until the 30th of June. Some seasons will be extended. Some will be uh, run on a shorter basis. And if we take into account Netball Shepherd and they've canceled their season, the Kyabram District Football League, which includes uh, teams like Admona have cancelled their season. This is a horrific thing for these sports clubs. This submission uh, is again presented by Jamie Macri from AFL Goulburn Murray, Peter Foote, Chairman of AFL Goulburn Murray and myself, President of the Kyla Park Rec Reserve Committee. On behalf of what is a very extensive um, uh, list of support. We have state bodies from basketball, AFL and Football Victoria who have supported this submission. We have local associations in Shepparton Basketball, Golden Valley Hockey and Shep Netball Association have supported, along with many uh, clubs who have put their name to this uh, submission. I have conservatively estimated that I have over 6,000 people represented based in the Shepparton area seniors, juniors, men, women, boys, girls of all ages uh, being supported by this submission. It only, uh, I don't have more names and we could possibly get up to eight or 9,000 people on our list, but this was pulled together in eight days to try and make the council submission. So our councillors have some idea uh, of what this may have on the budget impact. I cannot calculate that, but what I can say uh, council, not, not through my submission, council's already graciously allowed from the 16th of March to the 30th of June. We're looking for that to be preceded and extended, and that is the request. Uh, thank one you. minute to, to go, just one minute left. Uh, thank you, I'm done. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for your submission, and thank you for presenting uh, those uh, submissions today. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions. Hey. Sally Fitzgerald. So next is Ms. Sally Fitzgerald, representing landowners Adams Archer and Cooper Road, Skyala. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Sally Fitzgerald. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You are representing landowners Adams Archer and Hooper Road Skyala, and you are here to make that presentation uh, on your submission. Thanks. You have five minutes um, okay. and um, at four minutes, uh, a bell will ring and I'll let you know, uh, but that's about it. So five minutes for your presentation and Thank counselors you. are yeah, and counselors are not going to ask any question, but they might seek any clarification from you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the submission regarding the land bordered by the Broken River, Archer Road, River Road and Doyles Road. I'm passionate about this land because I've lived there for over 40 years, as have many of my neighbours. We have been in discussion with previous council about the best outcome for this land for many years and feel now is the right time, the best time for the council to investigate future development for the reasons listed in our submission. The land would satisfy the council's future needs 
for land and housing recreation for the greater Shepparton city. My neighbours and myself have enjoyed living in this area. The well cared for land offers future residents an opportunity to grow their own fruit and vegetables in good soil. There is enough land to offer a diversity of block sizes for those who may wish to work from home in the future and we feel that would be an advantage. Uh, with some positive investigation already carried out by the council through the C195, the land is ready for consideration. We invite any councillors to come out and have a look at this area. I'm sure you would then agree with us, the land is worth some further um, investigation and future investment. Any funds invested in this area by the council would be recouped through the future, uh, through the development's contribution fund. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, you don't, nobody has a question there or clarification? Okay, thank you very much, uh, okay. Ms. Sally Fitzgerald, for your time today. Thank you. Right, we're online now. <laughs> Zoom from here on in. Yeah. Can we start straight away? Do we have someone in the waiting room? David Huxton. Okay. David. Good evening, Mr. David Huxtable. You are representing basketball Victoria country. That's correct. Um, you have five minutes for your presentation and a bell will ring at four minutes. Uh, so please carry on. And um, Councillor Smythe seeks any clarification um, with regards to your presentation, but they will not be asking questions as such. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors, and also to CEO Peter Harrit and staff, and I congratulate you on your leadership during this difficult time. I note Council's immediate community economic response and acknowledge the previous speaker in this regard, and I thank you for that. Unfortunately for indoor sports, due to the restrictions, this will be of little assistance um, through, our, through our reactivation of basketball. My name is David Huxtable, GM of Basketball Victoria Country, and I work closely with the Greater Shepparton Basketball Association. Councillors will be aware that basketball is an all year round operation and generates the majority of income from seasonal registrations, game day fees, clinics, sponsorships, and events and tournaments. There are 240,000 registered participants who participate in weekly in country basketball and basketball across our state, 73,000 females and 167,000 males. It's the largest registered playing numbers of any sport in Victoria. And we represent our participants come from all genders, all ages and all abilities. In regional Victoria, there's 52,500 approximately and just under 20,000 of that is our female participation database. The gross annual turnover generally of basketball in Victoria is in excess of $100 million. And if we look at the intergenerational review of Australian sport that notes together, sport creates significant value for Australia with at least $7 returned on every dollar. That puts us just under the billion dollars of community and societal value from basketball. Greater Shepparton Basketball Association in this time has also had to review all aspects of its operations to ensure sustainability and viability for in excess of 1,500 weekly participants and has had to make some very difficult decisions. It is vitally important that we all provide strong, positive leadership and good communication this time and Greater Shepparton and Basketball should be congratulated for their work. This submission, councillors from BVC together with the Greater Shepparton and Basketball Association, we are seeking the council to allocate funds in the 2020-2021 budget to assist in the reactivation of basketball in Shepparton. The largest cost to basketball participation is the utilisation of costs and stadiums. And we submit the Greater Shepparton City Council remove the court high cost for basketball in 21, 2020 and 2021. We're aware that a number of councils in Victoria have already agreed to waiver fees, including Hume City Council, La Trobe Council and Borborshire. And this is request is to directly assist the reactivation of our sport and the return to grassroots basketball. As I said, the challenge to our sport is the shortfall of revenue impacting the capacity to fund ongoing operational costs. Basketball is recognised as one of the highest team participation sports in Shepparton and in Victoria, and together with Greater Shepparton Basketball Association, 
we're all working with council and council's recreation staff to continue to increase participation in our sport. One of the impediments is the large cost to hire those courts at the Shepparton Basketball Stadium. And we are seeking your assistance in the, uh, in the forthcoming budget to assist the association to get our participants back onto our court at the cheapest possible cost. Estimated that we probably spend over $100,000 on that court hire annually, and that's uh, what we're seeking from council tonight. I appreciate the time to be able to submit on behalf of uh, Shepparton Basketball and Basketball Victoria Country. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. So the presenter can be removed from Zoom meeting now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Ms. Williams representing Cousin Park Advisory Committee. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Can you start now? Yeah. Good evening, Ms. Uh, Ms. Williams. Yep, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. You are representing Cousin Park Advisory Committee. Yes, that's correct. Just to let you know that you have five minutes for your presentation, and at four minutes, I'll let you know. The bell will ring, and I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, Councillors might uh, seek any clarification uh, with regards to your presentation. Uh, that's, that's a simple format for today. Please okay, start. Thank you. All right. Um, good evening, Mayor Abdullah and councillors, and um, thank you for hearing my submission. I'm here this evening on behalf of the Custom Park Advisory Committee. Custom Park is a bushland style cut park encompassing 33 hectare hectares of wetlands, woodlands, and open space on the northern outskirts of Tatura. The park is a valuable community asset for the township, providing educational opportunities, passive recreation, and significant habitat for indigenous plants and animals. An iconic part of Pussum, Pussum Park is the large rotunda that is used for public events and general day-to-day -day activities by park users. Picture one of the um, printouts that um, you should have shows a, a public event at the rotunda. These occur several times a year. More frequent is the use of the facility by community members and groups such as GV Connect for morning tea outings, mothers groups, fitness groups, family gatherings, and passing travellers as a wayside stop. A key part of the rotunda infrastructure is a retaining wall on the western side as shown in the backgrounds of pictures two and three. The wall provides both amenity and aesthetics for park to park users. It provides a barrier to some of the traffic noise on the adjacent and busy Undira Road and also shelters from prevailing winds. The wall also provides an element of privacy, shielding users from passing traffic. The retaining wall was constructed by volunteers 25 years ago. Unfortunately, due to natural processes, the wall has deteriorated since its construction and was recently classified as failed during a council asset condition survey. This means it needs to be replaced or pulled down as soon as practical. In picture four, you can see a lean on some of the upright posts. The wall is currently fenced off to prevent people climbing on it as children regularly do. The council team responsible for management of Custom Park have sought a quote for the replacement of the wall, and this is $12,000. The Custom Park Advisory Committee are requesting that funds be made available in the next budget for the replacement of the wall. We note that Cusson Park has not received any capital funding since it was established 25 years ago. We believe the facility infrastructure should be maintained to retain its usability and for it to continue to provide an excellent outdoor facility for the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time today. No worries. Okay. So if the presenter can be removed from the Zoom meeting, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, next we have um, Mr. Ian Tuena and Ms. Carrie Tuena. I hope I pronounced their names correctly, but can you please bring them in the Zoom meeting? There's two participants currently coming in, so I believe it may be both of them. Yes, yes, there are two. <laughs> can you please bring them in the Zoom meeting? There's two yes. participants currently coming in. 
So, yes, yes, there too. Am I right yes. to go, guys? Uh, yes, I'll be waiting for Kerry. No, Kerry's, um, she's in the room. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, please start. Uh, just to let you know that you have five minutes for this presentation, and at four yeah. minutes, a bell will ring. I'll let you know. Councillors may seek any clarification from you uh, during the presentation. Okay. Please start. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, I just uh, note on page 43 of the planning um, in the budget, um, in the key initiatives, there was no mention of funding to resolve the land use in investigation area two. Um, there is reference to implementing the Southeast Precinct Structures Plan to ensure sufficient um, supply of residential land. In the 2007 Greater Shepparton and Housing Strategy released in 2009, it was identified there was a shortage of land allocated for rural living within the, within the Shepparton region. Again, in the 2019 land supply and demand um, uh, five to 10 years document, it was identified Shepparton had the capacity for future uh, residential division of some 10,000 lots um, uh, for future with a range of 20 to 26 years supply. Yet again, um, land available for rural living was in limited supply. Land within the investigation area zone two meets all of the six objectives that as stated in the 2050 growth plan. Landholders in this zone have spent considerable amounts of money uh, prepared, preparing reports for council. We ourselves have spent in excess of $40,000, yet the council seems not to be prepared to allocate any funding to resolve this area. Um, two years ago, I went to the Bega Shire on behalf of a client and uh, in order to get apply for a building and planning permit for a project in that shire. Two days later, I walked out with a building plan and, and uh, sorry, the planning permits and the building permits. I was amazed. When I asked how was this possible, the reply was, our CEO has requested we are to assist and process any application that will promote development and employment efficiently and as effectively as possible. For 15 years, we've been trying to get the, the land resolved in, in investigation area two clearly identified is a, a desperate need and a shortage of land available for rural living. We need to sort of move further with, forward with this. As mentioned with, in Sally's submission, the council will recoup any expenditure um, in processing this. And I just urge the council to allocate some funding and finally get this investigation area to resolved. And um, I'd be most grateful if you were able to follow through on that in a, a, a pretty efficient and timely manner. That's all I'd like to say, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so. Cameron drew it. Yeah. All right, next is Mr. Cameron Drew, representing Golden Valley Hockey Association. Cameron is here. Good evening. You can hear us, Cameron? I can. That's good. Uh, all right, so you have five minutes for your presentation today. At four minutes, a bell will ring, I'll let you know. Um, other than that, um, over to you. Councillors may uh, seek any clarification about your presentation uh, as we go along. Okay, thank, okay. thank you, Mayor Seema, councillors and, and Peter, for the opportunity to speak this evening. At the completion of the construction of the multi-purpose pitch at the sports precinct in, in late 2016, we were unfortunately left with a, what many regarded as an unfinished facility. Player dugouts, spectator shelter, and a scoreboard were not provided, and the lighting was far from adequate for hockey. Apparently funds were diverted at the time to other developments in the precinct. Portable player dugouts were provided in July, 2019. While the multi-purpose pitch has been used at times by the association, by the GB Hockey Association, we have not been able to fully utilize it due to these shortcomings. The desire to address the need for improved lighting now is due to the recent announcement of us and council hosting the junior state championships next July, an event that will bring 
many families from all around the state for the week at various age levels. This event requires two pitches capable of hosting under 18 matches well into the evening. A letter of support from Hockey Victoria is included in the permission. Along with enabling a successful event next July, an adequate level of lighting on this pitch opens up a range of additional possibilities for the association, such as offering midweek competition, enticing new people to the sport they would otherwise be unable to play and participate due to involvement in other sports on the weekend. With the uncertainty of whether we can have a winter season this year, improved lighting on that facility will offer us the opportunity to significantly expand the twilight competition later this year. As the multi-purpose pitch is open for other groups and sports to book and use, upgraded lighting will make the facility much more attractive for those other groups to utilise. Acknowledging we are the primary user of the facility, the GV Hockey Association offers to contribute 20% of pre-GST costs. We see now is the right time to upgrade this facility with the looming uh, Junior State Championships next year, after which we will remain strongly placed to host major state and national hockey events well into the future. So yeah, thank you for the consideration of, of our submission. Thank you. Thanks for your time today, Cameron. Thanks. Thank you. You can end this session at your end. Okay, so next we have Mr. Carl Walters. Um, is he in the waiting room? Good. Can you bring them in? Bring him in. Hello, Carl. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Carl, you're representing Tatura Community Plan Committee, and yep. you are here to make a presentation. Just to let you know, you have five minutes for this presentation, and a bell will ring at four minutes. So um, over to you. Councillors may seek any clarification from you during your presentation. All right, then. Okay. No worries. Thank, thanks, uh, Seema, and uh, hello all. Um, so just, just wanted to um, uh, thank you for the opportunity and also well done on the draft draft budget. It's not easy putting something together of this scale, so well done. Um, there's a number of great projects in there funding, looking at uh, works in Tatura already, and um, which, which is fantastic from our perspective. So I've listed a couple of those in, in the um, submission. Um, a couple in particular, I suppose, Douglas Street car park uh, lighting that will um, allow us to to um, have safe passage, special at this time of year. Um, once that's upgraded, I think that'll be a, a great facility and uh, and support the RV parking pilot, which has um, been approved previously at council meeting. So that's good. Um, I think one thing I want to highlight is, from our perspective, the um, the walking track extension, the two hundred forty eight thousand for that. Um, into Tura is very well received in the draft budget and um, we've attached our draft, or attached our master plan for walking tracks for your staff to action, I suppose, when that comes to fruition. Um, and we're looking at the O'Reilly path, so that'll be an interesting time and, um, and very well appreciated. So two items I wanted to, to raise, which aren't on the budget and, um, and again, the, the old festering saw, I suppose, of Mateer Park extension. Um, it's been around for 15 years. Um, and I understand there's been significant progress over the last little bit. What I would, from a community plan perspective, would be good if there would be a, a nominal fee, a nominal amount put in the um, 2020, 2021 budget to allow a little bit of progress on the, on the um, Mateer Park extension or redevelopment or, or some action or design or master plan review uh, would be good. Um, just shows a little bit of confidence that it's moving forward and um, the community over here, are, uh, it's pretty hard to get people thinking positively about McTeer Park expansion when we haven't done it in that, that period of time. But um, anyway, so that would be one. Um, the other one I wanted to highlight, which comes from Tatura Park and um, from really from the Football Netball Club, but, but the community as well. So Tatura Park uh, has been a tier three ground, uh, which we've been paying rental on there for a number of years. Um, Tier three requires lighting, on my understand. Um, so yes, Tatura Park has lighting, but the Football Netball Club and, and others own those lights. They pay for those lights. 
they pay the power for those lights and they also pay for maintenance of those lights. So what, and, and they're no, not really up to speed with what the current standards should be. So what I would like is to ask the council to consider adding those to the draft budget, even the preliminary design of, of lighting for Tatura Park. So it actually can be um, council owned lights and maintained and looked after and, um, and we can legitimately move forward as a tier three ground. It's a little bit confusing and the people who rent the ground about whether it's the tier three, does that require lights or not? And, and uh, I think that would resolve it. It would also allow us to have um, great lights and potentially house night, night games of some sort, uh, whether it's cricket or football or even soccer. Um, so those two things are, would, be, would be good if there was a nominal starting fee in 2021 uh, for looking at 21, 22 for physical works, but they're just two I would, I'd like to put forward to be added to a, to a budget somewhere. Um, but, but apart from that, thanks for what's on the list. Um, we're very appreciative in Tatura. Um, glad to see a bit of bit of uh, cash coming on the eastern side of the river or western side of the river. Um, thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for your time today. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right. So next is Mr. Ross Graham representing Tourism Greater Shepparton. Do we have Ross in the waiting room? Okay. Here he is. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, thanks. Welcome, Ross. You can hear us? Yes, I can. That's good. So you're here for your presentation, or you're representing Tourism Greater Shepparton, and you have five minutes for this presentation. And uh, I'll let you know at uh, four minutes time that you've got one minute left. Other than that, um, councillors might seek any clarification from you uh, with regards to your presentation. But that's the format, so you go for your presentation. Thank you very much, Mayor Seema and councillors and Peter. Um, on behalf of Board of Tourism Greater Shepparton, we thank the Greater Shepparton City Council for the opportunity to respond to the draft budget as published on the Greater Shepparton website. The Board have taken the time to review and have the following points for consideration in the review of the proposed budget prior to its adoption by Council. In regard to COVID-19, the crisis has had a severe impact on many small businesses and individuals across the Goulburn Valley. It is understood that the budget process commenced and the draft budget was largely put in place prior to this crisis. It is, under, uh, it is important that Council revisit the budget and make transparent adjustments and concessions where possible. It's unreasonable to include the standard 2% rate increase when Greater Shepparton visitor economy businesses are under the most significant financial pressure and they need to feel understood and supported. With the mass cancellations of major events and leading industry advice suggesting that large scale events of any kind are likely to be at least 12 months away, we would like to request that the current events budget allocations be redeployed to smaller visitor economy, community livability infrastructure projects such as trail connectivity between our smaller towns to Shepparton and surrounding regional centres, i.e. linking to the O'Keefe Trail to Bendigo and to the Murray region. Also river access, public art programs and interpretive signage and storytelling. Discussions with the regional partnership board and local state government representation highlights the need to have detailed plans and designs in place for smaller projects so that when funding is made available by the state and federal government, we are in a position to access these funds. Currently, we do not have an overarching tracks and trails strategy or a public art strategy, so are not ready to go when the funds do become available. We'd also like to draw attention to the local government guide for engaging with the visitor economy produced in the partnership by the Victorian government and the Victorian Tourism Industry Council in 2018. While we acknowledge the new local council government act that will come into effect from the next council elections in October, 2020, and the on poor status of the regional review, the principles and characteristics of a functioning visitor economy remain unchanged. Page 10 of the document, identifies and defines the role of each key stakeholder with local government playing a key role. However, it is the industry that creates the majority of jobs and is responsible for hosting visitors and meeting their individual needs. We highlight overall each level of government recognises the interconnectedness between the visitor experience and livability. A great place to live is a great place to visit and improving visitor amenities improves livability. 
The Tourism Research Project funded by Council makes clear recommendations on the need for Council and industry to work in partnership. This need was also identified as a key issue within the Economic Development Tourism and Events Strategy for 2017-2021. While the Joint Council and Industry Tourism Working Group has made strides to create a more collaborative approach between Council and the tourism industry, we are concerned at the CEO's and executive seeming refusal to progress the transparent review of governance required to address issues of duplication and brand confusion across Shepherd and Show Me, Great Things Happen Here, Council Tourism, Council Tourism Events, Council Marketing, Tourism Greater Shepherd and the Shepherd and Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Key priorities identified by TGS and the working group remain to resolve the ongoing governance issue and collaborate on the destination identity for our region. With the new SAM set to open early 2021 and over $300,000 being allocated for an opening party, there will be national and international attention. This is the perfect time to develop a standout destination brand, regardless, one of, minute left, uh, Ross. You, regardless of which region the state government tells us we belong to. We also refer to um, our submission from our previous budgets and that is there included in the letter. But in closing, we continue to encourage council to support the attractive presentation of a vibrant and welcoming destination. Support destination infrastructure, including parks and gardens, public toilets, shared pathways and cultural assets. Proactively engage with Tourism Greater Shepparton as the peak local tourism body in order to inform planning and decision-making. Commit to a planned and timely approach to a destination development, events, attractions, and marketing in partnership with local communities and industry to develop, deliver, and review results. And seek to partner with industry in the development of dedicated township-based destination action plans. And finally, commit to a full and transparent review of the governance and oversight of destination development and marketing for Greater Shepparton with the aim of developing an accountable, sustainable, and productive regional and local tourism framework endorsed by the industry. Okay, you're five minutes uh, over. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your presentation today. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move on to our uh, last presenter, Ms. Michelle Salisbury. She is representing Shepherd and Family and Financial Services. Hello. Hello, Michelle. Can you hear us? I can hear you. How are you? Yeah, we are good, thank you. Um, so five minutes for your presentation today and uh, a bell will ring at four minutes, I'll let you know. Say that again. You have been given five minutes for your presentation and I'll let you know at four minutes that you've got one minute left. Perfect. Councillors might seek any clarification about your presentation, but um, yeah, it's so that's your five minutes. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. That's good. Okay, so um, we're fairly new to Shepparton. We come across from Bendigo to recreate what was in Bendigo and Shepparton. I'll just give you some stats just to bore you senseless. Um, since the start of the year, we've got 1,571 families on our clientele list. 235 of those families are Indigenous. We're actually supporting 6,500 children to date in the Greater Shepparton community. Um, 48% of our clients are between 20 and 39. 42% between 40 and 64. 56% of them are women. What we've noticed in the last few weeks is that we're getting a lot of older clients coming through that are really, really struggling. We're, we're very fortunate to do deliveries into the community to the vulnerable. So we send them out once a fortnight, a pack to try and keep them going through. Um, we've got, we've been very fortunate to acquire new fridges and freezers. And right now, it appears to be holding we're not getting more excessively, we're not getting less, but um, we're really having a lot of people come through that are not Australian citizens. So the backpackers, the people that are here on work permits that are completely reliant on our service because there's no 
other avenue of any income for them. I think um, going forward, I love Shepparton. I live in Shepparton. I think going forward, um, we were really going to struggle to see job keeper and job starter end. I think a lot of the low income earners spend what they've got and perhaps overspend. I think we're going to really struggle to see financial capacity, having that loss of income. I see our, um, our clientele exploding. We work with all sectors of the community and we're very fortunate that we don't have, you can only be a DV or a homeless. We, we work with the whole spectrum and we work with the whole of the community services. My concern going forward is um, homelessness. We're seeing domestic violence, which it might be happening now, but that's a three-year process for people to get out of that mental compact of domestic violence. Mental health. Being isolated for people who have mental health is detriment. Now, the problem is that you can say, okay, we'll get over this coronavirus in the next six months. This is an ongoing issue that's going to last for a very long time for these people to be able to get up and recoup and, and recreate what they had before. So they're my, they're my key my key concerns, my key concerns are capacity workers. So not financial counsellors, because they're great. They do a fabulous job. But getting that short-term capacity worker to help deal with the smaller issues, get people back on their feet. Um, we're very lucky. We're very lucky. We've had our doors open the whole time with social distancing. Oh man, we spray everything. So Michelle, you have one minute left. That's fine. But to look someone in the eye and say, hey, it's going to be okay. And we're going to get through this together. That's been key for us. I bet you did. Michelle, is that the end of your presentation? That's it. Okay. Um, Mayor, Councillor, Mayor Jill, can I please, Michelle, what are you actually asking for? Um, you, you've come along with your um, submission. What, what is it Council can do for you? We're uh, asking for a little bit more funding. Okay. Not a have... lot, just a little bit more funding. Yeah. To try and get us through the next portion of what Shepparton's facing. And how much is that, Michelle, that you're asking for from the budget? I think it's 20% um, of what we've got and a $10,000 one-off just to help us boost what we're doing. But just to clarify that, 20% of what you've got, are you saying, and what would that, what, what would that, that amount be? 30,000. 30%. Oh, sorry. Did you say 30%? 30. Okay. Yeah. And a $10,000 once-off. That's just your... once-off, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for your time um, uh, today, Michelle. Thank you. I think that that's the end of um, this session for you. Thank you. We can leave. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Right. Okay. So with uh, Michelle being the last presenter, um, We'll now go back to uh, page number two of our agenda and there's a recommendation. Would, would a councillor like to move a motion? Yeah, councillor, okay. What's your, what's the motion? Mute. You're on mute. Could you unmute yourself? Sorry about that. I'd like to move that the standing orders be resumed. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Orozvari. 
I'll second the recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. We now go to the vote. Those in favor? Okay. Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Moving on to next recommendation. There's a recommendation on page two. Would a council like to move a motion? Um, Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move a motion that the council receive and note the submissions in response to the public advertisement of the draft budget 2020-2021. Uh, and point two, acknowledge the verbal presentations which have been made in support of these submissions. And point three, formally consider all received submissions and the adoption of the 2020-2021 budget at the council meeting to be held on Tuesday, 16th of June, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you, do I have a second? Councillor Giovanetti, thank you. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just briefly, I'd like to thank all the presenters tonight here. Um, it's interesting to hear the different uh, issues that concern the varied members of our community. Um, I just want to make a promise for myself, and I think on behalf of all councils, that we'll certainly consider uh, all those recommendations that have been made tonight and all those submissions. It's a tough year. We all understand that, and I think all the submitters also understand it's a tough year to formalise any sort of budget, but... Uh, will certainly give it uh, great consideration. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, Councillor Giovinetti, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Adam has covered it very well. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. With this, I now declare this meeting closed at 6.30 p.m. Thank you very much. <laughs>